You know middle class life is hard when you have to get a card out of your pocket to buy your $12 burrito from GYG. But luckily for us, services like Apple and Android Pay mean we can soon just tap our phones on the reader and boom, you've got your overpriced Mexican goodness. So let's have a look at what happens when you sign up for and add a card to Apple Pay on your phone. When you open up the Add Card screen, either in the Wallet app or when setting up your phone, a card reader comes up asking you to present your card. This uses simple OCR software to pull your card number and expiration dates off the front of your card. At this point, the phone has your card details in text form, the same way it would if you are online shopping or using iTunes. From here, it encrypts those numbers and sends them up to Apple servers, where it briefly decrypts them so Apple can check things like the card type and issuing bank. If Apple Pay supports the card type and bank, it continues on. Otherwise, it will send you back an error message. But otherwise, it continues on by encrypting those numbers again and sending them off to the issuing bank. It also sends a message back to your phone saying the card is pending, so the card will appear in the wallet app, but you can't use it yet. Okay, back at the bank, that number is checked against their records, and if it's all good, they send the verification for your Apple Pay setup. This is usually a code sent to your phone through SMS. Back on your phone, you put this code in, and we move on to the next step, actually setting up the virtual card on your phone. Now, I just want to clear this up. Virtual card isn't actually the right word, but, you know, it's easier just to call it that. To do this, the device brings together two pieces of information. The first comes from your bank. This is a piece of code called a cryptogram and is used by your bank to identify you when making transactions. The second piece of information sent up to the device is a token which represents a virtual card. In the wallet app, this is called the device token, the last four characters of which are shown here in the app and on receipts. To finish up, these two pieces of information are scored on a physical chip on the device called a secure element that's bundled together with the rest of the NFC hardware. But the final thing we need to talk about is what happens when you tap your phone to spend your money. The phone first confirms your identity using either a pin code or your fingerprint. And once that's done, gives the secure element and NFC circuitry the good to go message. These chips bring together the token and cryptogram and from there continue on the transaction like a normal tap and pay card. If you want to know what happens from here, check out my other video on how tap and pay cards work. And if you enjoyed the video, it'd be great if you could give us a like. And if you want to see more, subscribe. And of course, we're always looking for more video ideas. So be sure to leave them down in the comments or hit me up on Twitter.